Psalms 147. Praise ye the Lord. Not PTL. Look at Psalms 148, verse 1. Praise ye the Lord. Psalms 149, verse 1. Praise ye the Lord. Psalms 150, verse 1. Praise ye the Lord. At the end of Psalm 150, praise ye the Lord. At the end of Psalm 149, praise ye the Lord. At the end of Psalm 148, praise ye the Lord. At the end of Psalm 147, praise ye the Lord. There's too much praise in other things in the world. And I'm talking about Christians because it doesn't matter what the world praises. Because the Bible tells us the world hates Jesus. I'm talking about Christians. When the Bible outright reads, Praise ye the Lord, 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 and praise ye the Lord. That's what the last two pages of my Psalms read in my Bible. In Psalm 146 at the end, praise ye the Lord. Ye, praise ye the Lord. For it is good to sing praises unto our God. Again, is that singing and praising God and giving God the glory, giving God the... Yeah, I can... I can truthfully, honestly say, except for the time of, you know, between 2000 and 2008, when I worked for the newspaper and I had to drive third shift, uh, you know, working two or three o'clock in the morning, I would listen to, there was a radio program on um, But only if it was good, it was also focused on the family, but it had to be good. And well, I can't think of the other one weird about UFOs and stuff like that. All right, not important. But other than that, I can't remember how far back I've not listened to a radio. In the car, anywhere, AM, FM. Now, we've had a hurricane, a couple of hurricanes come here and through Florida. We listen to a radio, you know, for the updates and news. I've had to listen to the radio at the farmer's market, but that's what they try to do to blast the preaching of the gospel, but that's not volunteer. My music has been to God. And I can't remember how far back. I wonder what happen if I, if you were to give me the keys to your car, go out your car and turn the ignition. I wonder what's it. I wonder what's would come out of those speakers. In contemporary Christian music and rock, and for Jesus and rock in Christian church and rapping for Jesus. That's not music. In God's ear. For it is pleasant. It has to be pleasant music. And praise is common. It ought to be common. We ought to be thanking God. We ought to be worshiping God. We ought to be honoring God. The Lord does. Present tense. Build up Jerusalem. There's coming a day when he will, will truly build up Jerusalem and set his son upon David's throne. And gather and gather together all gather together the outcasts of Israel. And that's the second advent. When Israel will grat gratification and praise the Lord for saving them, giving them a new heart and cleansing them.
This verse struck me today, this current event for me. He has healed the broken in heart and binds up their wounds. Israel in the tribulation period is going to be broken. And they're going to be diseased. And they're going to be aching. And there'll be no glorious time, Psalms 147 said, for, for the nations of Israel when Jesus comes, praise ye the Lord. That Lord is God, Jesus Christ. When Jesus Christ mounts on that horse, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and gathers his church behind him and comes back and puts the goat nations to shame and, and lifts up the sheep nations that helped his people, and takes the curse off the earth and everything will be like it was back in the time of the Garden of Eden. Except for the snake or the serpent. And they'll all know Jesus. And there'll be no need for street preaching. There'll be no need for gospel tracts. He telleth the number of the stars. It's kind of funny because when I went to school, oh, there were hundreds of stars, thousands of stars. Today, uh, you grow up, there are millions and billions of stars. And now there's trillions and whatever numbers. And with the, the, the invention and the, the Hubble Space Telescope out there, We don't know how many stars there are. My Bible says God does. Whoop, there goes a falling star. Take that one off. As much as God counts the hairs in your head, the ones that, okay, take that one out. Oh, he just combed his hair to take out. Well, I think there's, yep, I don't know if I think there's a thing. Eight hairs came out combing his hair. We got an almighty God that knows how many stars he created, knows how many hairs are on your head and everybody's head. That's a wonderful, magnificent God. I wouldn't mess with that God. And he calls them all by their name. It was a fun, funny about the time like I said, when I was listening to the radio, I worked third shift at the newspaper. And one, it was so funny, one of the, the advertisements would come on was, I forget the name of it, uh, but you could purchase a star and give it a name. So you could pay this company for a star, and they give you a star track, a star chart, and wherever that star was, and that star will be called by that name you paid for. And God's like, that ain't the name of that star. I named it. I mean, there are stars up there right now in the constellations that uh, men have called names. And there are in the Bible names of some of the stars. But God has names and knows them all. In the entire universe. And the Bible goes forth to say those stars are probably angels. And you can't say that the stars are unlimited because God knows the number and God knows their name. So there is a set number. And it's a number that's beyond the number of man. And yet God has a number, and not only does God have a number, but he has a name. And he knows those names. Now, I'm not picking on any Democrat, I'm not picking on any Republican, but take any president, both past, present, or future. And then say, Mr. President, sir, or if you ever get a woman, ma'am. Now, think about this. Now think of this with the current population of America as it is right now, sir or ma'am, future, as the President of the United States, can you tell me all the names of the people that live in your country? No. And I guarantee whoever the President is, 
past, present, future. There are some people in the Senate and there are some people in the House he probably doesn't know or has forgotten their names. There may even be staff in the White House may not ever inter been to introduced to know their name. I don't know. And yet God knows all the names and the complete number of the stars in the universe. I went to two high schools. I went to a technical school and I went to, to a high school. I did not know everybody's name in that high school. In Groton, Connecticut, where I went. Do you know God knows everybody, all the names, the students and the teachers and the facility workers and all the visitors, and he knows how much hair is on their head. And he knows the original hair color, even if you dyed it. That's a mighty, wonderful, terrific God we have. And then he says, well, let's go back to Genesis chapter 1. Check this out. And, you know, to God, it's nothing at all. Genesis chapter 1, verse 16. And God made two great lights. The great light to rule the day, that's the sun. The great light to rule the night, that's the moon. He made the stars also. Moses, yeah, write this down. I made two great lights. Yeah. One great light for the day. Moses right there. Yep, the sun. One great light for night. It reflects the sun. Moses is right. And, oh yeah, Moses. We, yeah. Before we take a break for writing, yeah. My hands are killing me. I made the stars also. And that Hubble telescope I'm going to say monthly. It's coming back with new footages of pictures that what we did not know. Verse 5. Great is our Lord. You better believe it. You know what Jesus said? Every idle word shall man give account. Matthew chapter 12. Our God's a great bookkeeper. And you better be knowing, according to the book of Numbers, and particularly Numbers chapter 7, and Chronicles, our God records everything. If he's got the name of the stars, he's got the name, uh, he's got all your hairs counted. He's got everything you've done and everything you will do, and it's being recorded. We got Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Ezra, Nehemiah, Job. And there's a book in heaven with your name in it. And it don't have chapters and verses. It has dates and time. On August 21st, 2020, at 3 o'clock p.m., fill in the blank. At 3.23 p.m., I don't remember what I did. God did. And if it's a sin or a transgression or iniquity, the only way he's going to erase that out of the book is if we confess our sins. He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Cleanse us when he wipes it out of the book by the blood of Jesus. Great is our God and of great power. And I say this often, video games, power, power up, power. Movies, he's got the power, he's got the Now, you, you ain't got, and you will never get the power that God has, even when we get into New Jerusalem. Because we're not going to sit on that throne. God is. That's the power. No one is going to cast the devil into the lake of fire, but God. And someone told me, you know, rebuke the devil. You don't rebuke the devil. You flee from the devil. 
ain't got the power to rebuke the devil. I ain't going to mess with the devil. He comes messing with me, I'm just going to turn him on God. <laughs> His understanding, God's understanding, is infinite as much as it, he knows all the stars. I don't know how many babies are born at this moment today on this date, yet God knows them all and God knows the funerals of all the people who died this day. God has remembered every single gospel track you got out, even though you can't remember them. Every name you've forgotten, God doesn't forget. There's a hospital behind me right now. And with COVID-19, I don't know how filled it is. But hospitals are pretty much filled. God knows every patient that's in every bed, in every place of that hospital, wherever they are right now, whatever test they're getting right now, and he knows where all the nurses are, he knows where all the doctors are, he knows the people who's cleaning the floors, he knows who, where the CEOs are, he knows what the nurses are doing who just came off shift, he knows what the nurses are that are going to be coming on shift. And the guy that comes in and fills the soda machine. And never mind the cafeteria workers. And the people that come and wheel you to your car. And then the security officers. And never mind, he knows everybody in, the, we got at least four jails there. God knows everybody who's in that jail, whether they're guilty or not, who's working at that jail. God knows all the police stations. God knows before that ambulance is called where that ambulance is going to go. That's an infinite God. At the same time that God is feeding the whales and taking care of the birds, when a soul died, no, nope, you don't belong here at all. You died and you wake up in hell. And when a soul died, come home. Be absent from the body and present with the Lord. God knows every soul, when that soul dies, he knows right where that soul goes. We're not going to do the farmer's market ministry because i got a problem with my foot. God knows that. And I'm not, if they're going to be, if they're going to get to the point like, wow, he didn't show up. Hey, <laughs> God's going to see that. I won't. And somebody's sitting there, you know, that, that, that preacher, he didn't come today. I, ho I hope he's okay. I hope everything. God sees that too. That's an infinite God. God's in the house of the person that's crying from affliction. And God's in the house of the one causing affliction. That's an infinite God. And you're going to say nothing of evolution is better than God. You're going to say the Pope is better than God. The Pope doesn't even know all the names of his Catholic East. God knows all the names of his and God knows the names of those that are not his. God knows the names of all the stars. Never mind the planet. The Lord lifted up the meat because they need lifted up. And when the Lord lifts you up, that's honor and glory. That's not pride. He casts the wicked down to the ground. Isaiah 14. When Lucifer fell. There's coming a time that the Antichrist will be down on the earth in the tribulation period. Revelation chapter 12 says the dragon's kicked out of heaven. We're in the tribulation period. We're in the second advent of Psalms 147. <coughs> Sing unto the Lord with thanksgiving. 
We were a Christian nation. We gave God one time a year out, out of the government. We gave God one time a year to get the family all together. Praise God. Thank God for the bounty. Now if you're a superstore, you got to have your employees hurry up and get to work before the Black Friday comes along. It's amazingly sick, and I don't know what God will do. But the fact is, if you got to work in that superstore, and the CEOs are home glutting themselves. My thing, if I was in charge of the government, and I don't want to charge. But if I, hey, you, you want your store open on Thanksgiving? Your butt better be there right there, too. And you've ever shaken hand with your employees and grabbed it, that they're coming in on a family holiday that's given to God, and you better explain to God why your employees are there. J.C. Penney gave, gave his employees days off. You say, well, Chick-fil-A does. I see people working at Chick-fil-A on Sundays. They're out there cutting the grass. It's Southern Baptist, what I'm told. Better check the doctrine of Southern Baptist to make sure it's correct. I wouldn't take the name given amongst men whereby you must be saved or, and give it the name Jesus Chicken. I don't shop places like that. Sing praise unto the upon the harp of our God. I hope he's playing hope he's saying that to someone who can play the harp. If I picked up a harp and start playing, I'm gonna be making a joyful noise. Who covereth the earth with clouds? God created the clouds. Who prepares the rain for the earth? I thought the weathermen did that. You see, we got the cold front coming down here with this big arrow. Says we're going to get. Uh, uh, they came across. All Florida prepare for Hurricane Isaiah. It used to be Isaiah, but they changed it. Oh, oh, man, we named the storm after a book of the Bible. Quick, change it. And all Florida was to be prepared, and everybody ran to and that hurricane just. And Stiley went on the Facebook and the local uh, news program, the weather, and said, hey, where was your storm? And then idiots sent people to the beaches to watch nothing. And I know why God avoided Florida. There were people in Florida say, please, Lord, we don't, we don't need that here. Thank you, Lord. You know, when these storms do fizzle out and don't do nothing, you don't ever see the media, the weathermen, get, thank you, God. Thank you, Lord God, you picked up that tornado and you stopped it so it didn't do any more damage. You don't see that. Who maketh grass to grow upon the mountains. Well, grass is used for feeding animals. There are people in Florida that make tons of money down here. And almost every fourth trailer down here in Florida is a trailer that's got some kind of lawnmower or grass cutting service. He giveth the beast his food. And to the young ravens which cry. What about the whales? Save the whale. God take care of the whales. Oh, you know, they're running into fishermen nets and they're, and they're eating all these plastic. Well, that's because man is a slob. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We're a great man. We love everybody, but we, we, we crap everything on the earth. Imagine if they didn't sit, set up the DEP. Imagine what this polluted world would be, even worse with the industry. Man is a pig. 
but they'll come up to you, I'm good. In the back of my head, I don't say it, but you're good for nothing. That's what you are. He delighteth not in the strength of a horse. God has no thrill in horsepower. Look at these mighty races. Look at these big trucks. Look at this car. It's got four on the floor. It's got eight cylinders. It's got... God's like... Huh. What? Let's see what that automobile does when I come back. And after a thousand years, heaven and earth flee when I come. Let's see what that horsepower has. Let's see what that horsepower does when you don't, when you forgot to put oil in it. God has no delight in horsepower. He taketh not pleasure in the legs of men. God's not interested in sports. He ran 50 yards. God's like, I got a man over there who's got diseased feet. And he's out there walking, carrying the gospel and holding the sun. I am more pleased with that man than a guy carrying a ball. You know, I could solve the whole football thing in one shot. Give everybody their own football. They wouldn't be fighting over one stupid football. Give everyone a hockey puck and they wouldn't be fighting over one hockey puck. Really? God's not interested. Lord, look how many leg curls I could do. And look how many gospel tracks that guy just got out while you're over there at the gym doing nothing. And you're fixing that body up. You're getting those muscles all tightened for a coffee. And it came to what? All that exercise, all that good food, all that money you put into that is going to be wood, hay, or stubble. The Lord taketh pleasure. Oh, let's see what the Lord that takes pleasure in. In them that fear him. You know, God's not pleased with America today. God is not pleased with the world today. With COVID-19, very many are not fearing God. They're fearing COVID-19. We see the woman today in the store. She's wearing a mask and she's wearing a face shield. She has more fear of a disease that she cannot see than a God that she'll face one day. I'm going to die of COVID-19. I'm going to die of COVID-19. The wages of sin is death. If you don't die of COVID-19, you'll die some other millionth way. And if God wants you to get COVID-19, he'll get that COVID-19 right through your mask, no matter how much protection you got. And those that hope in his mercy... I fear God and say, God, please don't let us get COVID-19. You say, well, you go, you wear a mask. Romans 13, I obey the power. They want me to wear a mask, I'll wear it. If I can walk in the store and they don't say wear a mask, I won't wear a mask. Sir, you got to wear a mask in here. If I got to do business in that place, okay, I'll put a mask on. If I can go do business somewhere else and not have to wear a mask, bye, see you. Hope you get money from another loser. Ain't going to get it from me. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. They ain't praising the Lord in Jerusalem today. You got Jews who think that the, Jesus is not the Messiah. You got Catholics around swindling Christians. That, this is this place where Jesus was. This is where the Virgin Mary was. This is where John the Baptist was. It's not what the Bible says, but Here's some more money. You got Arabians over there swindling the Christians and thinking that they know Bible history when they don't know Bible at all. We're going to tell you that you go over there, Catholics or the, or the Arabians. 
We're going to tell you where the footprints of Jesus. Excuse me. Yes, sir. You got a question there? Yes, I do. What's your question, sir? Have you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ? Oh, no. I eat the man. And why are you telling me about the footsteps of Jesus? You don't know Jesus. Shut up. Sir, you have to leave the Holy Land. I ain't going to the Holy Land. And when I do go to the Holy Land, I'm having Jesus take me. I'll let Jesus tell me where he walked. And Jesus will tell Hey, see that spot? Come here, come here, come here, bride. See that spot right there? Right there. You see that? That's where I wrote on the ground where they tried to get me with that adultery woman. Ma'am, come up. There she is. Whoa. I mean, this is the same church that says, well, we got the head of John the Baptist. Okay. Uh, uh, what, what's your problem? Yeah, I got a question. Yeah. When I was over here in this city, they said they got the head of John the Baptist. How'd you get two heads of John the Baptist? Well, you got to understand that head of John when he was a baby. Oh, okay. I got it. Yep. Now I understand. You go over to Holy Land and you got Catholics who defy the Bible telling you about the Bible. Just give me your money. Just, just give it to me. I'll put it to greater you. Fear God and hope in his mercy. I was telling the guy, I was telling the, t -t today. When I was a little boy, we would wrestle and we would wrestle and, and wrestle until one of us cried mercy. The other one was the winner. Put you in a headlock. Come on. Okay, mercy. I'm with that God right now. I, I got so many things have come at me. God, mercy. I give up. You win. What is it? God likes that. God, I'm in a place right now. That I, there is no other help but you. What do I do? What do I confess? God's like, I like that. I don't like it. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise the Lord, O Zion. For he has strengthened the bars. Many people want to put a, beer, a, put a period there. He strengthened the bars. You see, you know, Jesus made wine. Drink a little wine for their infirmities. You know, those, those people that want to drink know all the Bible verses. But they don't know uh, that, that wine is a marker of strong drinks raging. Whosoever is eat by it is not wine. They haven't got that one. Strengthen the bars of thy gates. You're not talking about bars when you get drunk. You're talking about the bars and the gates of the city. When Jesus Christ seals the city of Jerusalem, it will be sealed. He has blessed, made happy the children within thee. That's second advent. He maketh peace in thy borders. That, that, listen, the, the, Donald Trump is making peace in the Middle East. Someone, <coughs> devil don't want me to say what I'm going to say. Someone says, Stalin, what do you feel about Donald Trump making peace today with Israel? With the UAR and there's other peace. I, I, I got two points on that peace. And I got the guy very angry with me. Number one, that peace is not going to last. Jesus said the peace of the earth doesn't last. There's coming one peace, that's Jesus Christ. And the guy said, oh, okay, well, what's peace number? You know, he's Donald Trump peace. It has to last forever. Donald Trump's not Jesus. Go, no, what's number two? I said, you're not going to like number two. Well, what's number two? I'm giving you a warning. You don't like number two. And I'm saying it as a suggestion. According to Revelation 5 or 6, I forget which chapter it is, 5 or 6, the Antichrist is coming in peace. And he's going to break that peace in three and a half years. If that's the peace you're looking for, then Donald Trump is the Antichrist. Whoa, did I get angry, did get angry me. I'm not calling Donald Trump the, the Antichrist, but either that peace in Israel is going to die. It's peace treaty number four now with the UAR. There have been three other peace treaties. This is number four. Why would you need four? Because the other three failed. 
And this is the ultimate peace that's spoken about in Revelation. Damn. Oh. Pack your bags, get ready. Donald Trump sending us home. I am not saying Donald Trump is the Antichrist. But if that is, if there is that great peace plan that comes out of the Middle East with Israel, woohoo! We're out of here. And if it fails, fail like every other peace treaty in Israel. You're not happy that Israel's going to be at peace. Israel will only be at peace with Jesus Christ on the throne. When his enemies are cast into the lake of fire by Jesus Christ. And those nations during the tribulation period, the sheep nations that help the Jews will be allowed in the millennium and enjoy the fellowship with the Jews and Jesus Christ. That's the peace I'm looking for. He maketh peace within thy borders and filleth thee with the finest of the wheat. The wheat without curse. Well, what's the wheat without curse? That would be like a tomato plant without no curse. You say, well, what's a tomato plant without a curse? They grows up and they're already red and ready to eat. I don't know. That's that's my that's my millennial thing of tomato plants. They grow up and they just got some oh this tomatoes and they're all red and they're ready to grow up. Oh, I can't wait. The millennium is where all the curse is taken off the earth, just as much as it was with Adam and Eve before they fell. They're gonna be so much wheat, they're not gonna know what to do with it. Thank be to Jesus. He sendeth forth his commandment upon the earth. His word runneth very swiftly. You know the word has legs? His word. It doesn't say word. It says his word. There's one word. King James Bible. He giveth snow like wool. God is in trust of the weather. Well, we have a cold front coming down. No, you have God. He scatters the whore for us like ashes. It's a beautiful, look, look at the beautiful snow we got overnight. God did that. He causes his ice like morsels. Who can stand before his cold? You know, snow has stopped armies, and I'm talking about mechanical armies. There have been Russian tanks that have been stopped because of the wintry conditions. There has been armies of horses, verse number 10, that have been stopped because of God's snow. Work stopped. School stopped at God's snow. And what is snow? This water particles are cold. I've gotten in trouble many times when I drove in the newspaper. When it'd be in the middle of winter and I got my van stuck in the snow and they had to come and get a tow truck. With all the house, house with all the horsepower, verse number 10, that our delivery vans had, I got stuck in God's snow and needed someone to pull me out. And when I stood out there waiting for the tow truck to come, if I'm not seated in a heated van, I'm out there wintry clothes on and coats and gloves and hats. I'm not standing out there in shorts. He sending out his word. And melted them. I don't know who that's talking about. <coughs> he said that, and we've been talking about weather, and we're talking about snow and ice. He causes the wind, so it's still the weather. 
to blow and the waters flow. God's weather phenomenon is phenomenal. It, it's too little rain and the land is barren. Too much rain and the land is flooded. He showed forth his word. It's been the word verse 15. It's the word verse 18. It's the word verse 19. He showed forth his word unto Jacob. And his statutes and judgments unto Israel. That was back in Exodus 20. That's what Moses did. You know, in Israel, there was no written account of Genesis. There was no written account of the Sabbath until Moses came along and wrote Genesis. And they didn't have the account of the finishing of Exodus until Moses finished Exodus. And they didn't have the finished account of Leviticus until Moses finished Leviticus. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, the word of God given to Jacob, given to Israel in charge. Our entire Old Testament is based upon what God has given Israel. Matthew, given to Israel. Mark, given to Israel. Luke, given to Israel. John, John was Jewish, Israel. Acts, half the book three quarters of the book, still the full book, is about Jewish. Hebrew. Duh. Written to the church. Uh, shut up. Jacob, I'm uh, Jacob. Uh, James, to the 12 tribes scattered aboard. 12 tribes of Israel. First Peter, second Peter, Christian and Jews. First John, second John, third John, given to Christian. You know who's in charge of our word? The Jew. You know, Jesus came onto his own and he was a Jew. He is the word, John chapter 1. The statute and the judgments were the law. Not the church. And that law is coming back in the tribulation and is coming back in the millennium. He, God, has not dwelt so with any nation. Rule out the Gentiles. If it's not Israel, if it's not of Jacob, they don't have no law. There you go. There it is. There you got it. Oh, we got to live by the law. We're seven-day Adventists. No, you're wrong. And you can't be a spiritual Jew. You can't be a Christian Jew. Because you got to be born of Jacob. And as for his judgments, the law, they have not known them. Oh, man. Had they known the judgments, for Jesus said, search the scriptures. They were. They didn't were search. And I, I can't quote the verse completely, but he says, in those scriptures, you'll find me. Another place he says, Moses wrote of me. I am that prophet that Moses spoke about. If they known the scriptures, and if they had seen Calvary, oh, there it is. They were going up to Pilate and say, Pilate, that's our God, that's our Savior, that's, that's our Messiah. You need to crucify him. Not because he's guilty of any crime, but you need to crucify him because he needs to suffer and die for our sin. If they knew the scriptures and if they saw Calvary. No. They didn't know Calvary. They didn't see Calvary. They wanted a man to come along and wipe Rome's butt out and, and give him the land that we've been talking about without the suffering Messiah. And it closes with, Praise ye the Lord. 
You know my people Israel? Yeah. They don't know anything about my word. Oh, praise ye the Lord. What? One day they will know the word. The word, capital W-O-R-D, in the name of Jesus Christ, who is God? The Jehovah Witnesses can't get that. We're to pray for the peace of Israel. We're to witness to the Jewish people. We are to bless the Jewish people. We are to help them in the gospel of Jesus Christ. They are God's only, one above, exact, no other nation in the world but Israel. 